Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today once again we have come with a very important topic particularly for the second year students Hagen Poiseuille's equation of uh, fluid mechanics a very very important topic to understand the pressure development of like the pressure difference across a pipeline flow so a uh, fluid is flowing through a pipeline and there is a pressure of uh, high pressure zone and there is a low pressure zone so this is my high pressure zone this is my low pressure zone and as we know that the that by virtue of its momentum um, the fluid always keeps on flowing from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone so first when there is a driving force so there is a driving force the pressure pressure difference in case of a momentum transfer or a flow uh, the pressure difference is my driving force it is driving the flow towards one direction so there is a driving force that is acting due to the pressure difference between the two points in the pipeline and the flow is, is uh, uh, developed in the pipeline at the beginning when the flow is developing my driving force dominates my driving force dominates dominates means uh, what happens is there is a resisting force now where does this resisting force comes from the resisting force comes due to the virtue of the fluid's viscosity since the fluid is viscous and there is a no slip existing at the walls of the uh, fluid and there is a skin friction given by the walls trying to resist the flow of the fluid trying to resist the flow of the fluid if the fluid is moving in this direction the resisting force is coming in this direction due to the virtue of its skin friction that is uh, the walls are giving if it's if it would have been a free flow it is free to flow there is no friction at all existing uh, if not some by the air definitely but whenever there is a fluid boundary there is a solid boundary that is covering the fluid so the solid boundary will try to maintain a no slip and will try to uh, give a skin frictional force which is transferred through layers of liquid and the layers of liquid will keep on giving the force in the reverse direction that is uh, in opposite direction to the flow of the fluid now at the periphery where the no slip exists that is the velocity of the fluid is zero at the periphery the shear stress or like uh, the um, resisting force given by the wall is maximum and as it is transferred through layers its effect gets on decreasing and at the center the uh, resisting force or the shear stress applied by the fluid is minimum so it is maximum at the walls minimum at the center simultaneously as the thing goes hand in hand the velocity at the center is maximum because the resisting force is minimum and at the periphery the velocity is zero because the resisting force is maximum and there is a no slip maintained so it doesn't let the immediate layer of fluid touching the walls of the uh, pipe to flow at all so at the beginning when we just move, uh, move the fluid it is in the developing region in the developing region if you haven't studied our boundary layer video just refer to the boundary layer video and you will get to know what is the developing region and what is the fully developed region in the developing region my empty that is driving force is greater than my resisting force and there exists a net acceleration because we know that net acceleration is nothing but uh, force net by uh, mass so because force is equal to ma so a is equal to f by m so when there is a net force in the forward direction uh, there will be an acceleration so the v so the velocity will keep on increasing in the x direction if this is my x direction this is my r direction it will keep on increasing in the x direction at a particular r at a particular point of time it will keep on increasing but for a fully developed flow for a flow that is fully developed the v will not change with respect to x so what will happen is at this point supposedly at a particular r at this point in a particular r so a fixed r at this point in a particular r at this point in a particular r at different x's the v will be constant so for a fully developed region for a fully developed developed region what will happen is fd will be equal to fr fd is equal to fr because of which the net acceleration will be zero and the v will be constant v is constant so we see that when a fluid flows in a fully developed region there is no net acceleration or no net force acting on the fluid because of which the fluid moves with a constant velocity there is definitely a velocity profile as i have drawn here at the periphery velocity is zero at the center the velocity is maximum so this is v is equal to zero and this is v is maximum but along the particular at the center supposedly if i go v will be maximum v max same value here same value here in the fully developed region so along the x direction there is no change in velocity because of which it is a fully because of that it is a fully developed uh, region 
because of which we understand that there is no difference between the driving force and the resisting force. When the driving force equals the resisting force, the fluid starts moving with a constant velocity because there is no net acceleration or no net force acting on the fluid. And this is the basis of our assumptions. The first assumption that we will consider is it is a fully developed flow. So the net acceleration is zero, net force is zero, the driving force equals the resisting force. First. Second is, it is a Newtonian fluid. What is the virtue of a Newtonian fluid? Virtue of a Newtonian fluid is what I have written here. That is the shear stress is equals to minus mu dvx dr. Uh, now, why this minus sign? Let us understand. This minus sign is because of the fact that as we go towards the periphery, as we increase the r, as we increase the r, the v decreases. So, the rate of change of v with respect to r has a negative sign. To negate the negative sign, we put a negative here. So, negative negative becomes positive. So, the force resisting in this direction as we have already shown is a positive force. So, it's resisting the driving force um, and that is why the minus sign is there. Now, what is the virtue of Newtonian fluid? Newtonian fluid is the resisting shear stress. The shear stress offered by the walls is minus mu dvx dr. That is not raised to the power of anything. If it would have been a non-Newtonian fluid, it would have been minus mu for a non-Newtonian fluid minus mu dvx dr whole to the power n. Now for Newtonian fluid, this n is equals to 1. So we are considering a Newtonian fluid for, to, to simplify the operation as of now. The second, the third condition is it is a laminar flow. It is not a turbulent flow, it is a laminar flow because for a laminar flow only this velocity profile will develop, will develop and thus we can easily track down the uh, delta p in terms of q, in terms of l, in terms of r. That is what we are aiming towards in the hagen poiseuille equation. hagen poiseuille is basically an equation that can relate the delta p across a pipeline through by its length, by its radius. If this is my radius, this is my length. If I increase the length, will my delta p increase? If I increase the radius, will my delta p increase? If I increase the flow rate, will my delta p increase? This is the concept with my pressure difference be affected by change of these things. Now, uh, we understand that uh, as, as I have already said that it is a laminar flow and the fourth and final assumption last but not the least, it is a steady flow. So, it is not changing with respect to time. So, my steady flow dv dt is equals to 0. So, this is my fourth assumption. Fully developed dv dx is equals to 0. So, these are my assumptions. Now, if I try to like balance the two sides, that is FD and FR, we put them equal. Now, we understand that this is the cross-sectional area. We have already seen that the driving force is a virtue of its, we have already said it is a virtue of its pressure difference because of which the driving force is occurring. And this is my cross-sectional area. So, this, if I consider this radius to be R, small r supposedly, this is my cross-sectional area. And for a curved surface, for the uh, shear stress or the resisting force, by virtue of its uh, shear stress, what is happening? Where is the shear stress getting applied? The shear stress is getting applied at the walls, at the walls, at the periphery. So, if we like consider a circular cylinder of radius r, it will be on the curved surface area. So, this will be on the curved surface area. Now, let us balance the two forces. Let us balance the two forces. What will happen? What will happen? Let us see. Let us draw a small figure here. This is my fluid motion. Fluid is flowing in this direction. And this is supposedly my R. And this is my bigger R. So I take a small cylinder for uh, understanding what is happening. And supposedly this is my curved surface area. This is my curved surface area. And this is my cross sectional area. So what happens is Fd becomes delta P into pi R squared for the cross-sectional area and fr that is resisting force becomes minus mu dvx dr into curved surface area that is 2 pi r l l being the length of the pipeline length of the pipeline and the curved surface area is definitely 2 pi r l now we equate the two sides that is we put them equal to each other because fd is equal to fr we know when there is net, no net acceleration so fd equal to fr which means delta p into pi r square is equals to minus mu dvx dr into 2 pi r l. So we negate, we cancel r and r, we cancel pi and pi. What remains, we will club the r terms on one side. What remains is delta p into r dr is equals to mu 2 pi, 2 mu l into dvx minus, definitely a minus sign, pardon me on this, 
minus mu l into dBx into 2. So this is the final equation. Now we'll try to uh, integrate the equation. The delta p will definitely come out because it is a constant, it doesn't depend on r. So delta p integration of r dr is equal to minus mu l into 2 dvx. So we get this. We get this. And when we integrate this, what we get out of it? Let us integrate this. Let us integrate this together. And what do we get? Delta p into r square by 2 is equals to minus 2 mu l into vx plus a constant of integration plus a c. Now we do not know the value of c but what we know is as I have mentioned that at the periphery when r, when r is equals to capital R that is at the periphery at the radius vx is equal to 0. There is no slip condition by no slip. No slip. At the periphery the velocity is 0. So we put this in the equation delta p into capital R square by 2 is equal to minus 2 mu l into 0 plus c. So c becomes nothing but delta p r square by 2. So you see that c becomes delta p r square by 2. Now when we equate this, once again put the value of c back into that final equation that we got in this equation. In the equation replacing c, replacing c, what do we get? Delta p small r square by 2 is equals to minus 2 mu l into vx plus delta p capital R square by 2. Now we, what we do, we bring this on this side, we bring this on this side. So we get 2 mu l vx is equals to delta p by 2 common r square minus r square. And if we have to express, if we have to express delta p in terms of the rest of the equations, we get 2 into 2 that is 4. 4 mu L Vx by R square minus R square. If we have to express it in terms of Q, that is flow rate and not velocity, it will be nothing but 4 mu L into Q by pi small r square into capital R square minus small r square. So we see, so we see that what is happening is what is happening is when we take the dependency take the dependency of a pressure drop across a pipeline what are the dependencies pressure drop is directly proportional to the length of the pipeline so if we increase the length the pressure drop across the pipeline will increase first pressure drop is directly proportional to mu so if we increase the viscosity of the fluid the pressure drop across a particular length keeping all other things constant if the viscosity is increased the pressure drop across this length will increase pressure drop is inversely proportional to d square or r square if i say that is a small r square rather that is when we increase the diameter or the radius of the pipeline the delta p across that pipeline uh, decreases. So if this length is there and this is my radius, if I increase this to this, automatically my delta p across the pipeline will decrease. So it increases with increase in length, keeping all the parameters con constant. It increases with increase in mu, keeping all other parameters constant. It increases with increase in flow rate. It increases with increase in flow rate. And last but not the least, it decreases with increase in radius. So the delta p across the pipeline is but matched as such. And this is my Hagen Poiseuille's equation. This is my Hagen Poiseuille's equation. The Poiseuille's law, also known as the Poiseuille's law. So that is it. That I think will conclude the discussion for today. Uh, for upcoming videos, please do share, subscribe our channel and give us all the love and support. Uh, thank you very much.